and welcome you guys to the session today. Thanks for coming. We've got 29 of you lovely souls here to uh, watch me create and let me show you uh, the latest collection by Anna Aspinas Designs, which is basically me and my dad. <laughs> and then a group of ladies who helped me out with, uh, with the design team. But um, I wanted to show you this today. We're going to run through it and um, maybe take a look at um, creating some pages, hopefully inspire you. It sounds like everybody's kind of feeling a bit like me. I was in yoga this morning and um, the ladies there were kind of saying that they weren't really too much in the Christmas spirit either. So um, hopefully we can change that. I'm just going to move you guys down the bottom here so that I can kind of see what we're doing. So this is the, the kind of collection. This is the... Um, the, the base collection, I, I, I should say. So we have the art play palette. Um, you'll notice I've kind of been into dark colors lately, and I thought that I might kind of give you some guidance there on how to use some of these darker backgrounds, because typically I go lighter. Um, darker backgrounds can sometimes be a bit challenging to use, but um, hopefully I can give you some ideas there. And then, of course, we have the coordinating photo blends, clipping masks, we have an artsy layered template, which I think I'm going to play with today, and then word art, and then these fun magic sprinkles. And then our companion sets to coordinate with the collection is are the um, artsy cards, the artsy transfers, and then there, are, then there are two brush sets. So these fun trees, kind of a variety of trees, but definitely on the kind of winter Christmassy side, I tried to, to pick trees that didn't have too many leaves on them or had the sort of wintry feel to them. And then these really fun branches. I really like the one with the bird in here. So we're going to play with those. And then, of course, with the base collection, there is a limited kind of sort of, I guess it's a mini palette, really. It comes with a um, paper, a bunch of additional word art. It's got Got this fun uh, multimedia cluster and then some layout ideas. It kind of gives you an idea of some of the different ways that you could put some of these layouts together. And you get that with this collection. And so you know the deal. This is available for about a month. Um, it's available for 40% discount. All the other products are available for 20% discount until I release a new collection. So I'm going to get started and um, let's begin with the artsy layered template. I had a couple of ideas of things that we could do with this template today. Oops, I can't see because of the, drag this over here. So I'm dragging this into my workspace. You can of course go to file open and drag it in that way. I just like to bring it in directly from the, um, from its saved location on my hard drive go ahead and close this out for now and just bring my so we've got all these different layers um so one of the things that you can do obviously you can go in and you can just add your images so I could go ahead and kind of bring my cursor I want it on top of these sort of layers here but underneath the frame layers so I'm going to kind of put my cursor in the middle there and create just a new layer it doesn't really matter because then I can actually I can add some stamp directly onto that new layer um, or if I wanted to introduce a file, then maybe I would go and bring in one of the photo blends copy masks, which I can't at the moment find. I wonder what happened to them. Huh. Okay. Well, <laughs> I seem to be missing the photo blends here. Let's see if I can find them in one of these. Maybe I accidentally moved them. I'm like thinking I did release the uh, photo blends clipping masks, didn't I? So I'm just kind of running through and just taking a look to see where these could possibly be. If not, it's going to be a bit tricky. And I don't know how this has managed to get in here because um, this shouldn't be in here. So I've managed to lose a product already, which is not a great start. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I have to go and access the files. I have to just re-download it. So I'll just drag these over and then bring them into here. Okay. So these should show up in a minute. Um, so in the meantime, I'm going to show you a couple of ways that we can work with this template. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, 
kind of just play around with the different layers, some of the different ways we can kind of mix this template up. So obviously you have the title here. This is a text layer. Um, I really just use this as ideas for placement of title. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that layer off. And then you've got the option, if I say, for example, the idea here is obviously to blend the photo into this area here and then add photos to the clipping masks here. Um, if I have, say, five photos instead of three photos, then one of the things I can do is I can duplicate these frame layers and I can add in additional spaces or options for my photos. So I can then just kind of move these around. You probably want to just change the rotation of them slightly and sort of move them a little bit just to kind of give them a little bit of variation. You can, of course, move these around, but you're going to kind of put them in a sort of a pleasing arrangement so that we now have this sort of quad of um, of frames like this. Another thing I like to do too is I like to duplicate frames. I like to have overlapping frames. So you could go ahead and add in an overlapping frame like that and just kind of play around until you kind of get something you like. So kind of like that looks good to me. And then I can select all of these layers and I have the option then to be able to move these around. So you can see that that works pretty well like that. I could also rotate this as well. So say if I had landscape, photos instead of portrait photos, then I could go ahead and do that. And obviously I'd have to maybe change my arrangement of images a little bit by moving these around. So maybe we want four photos instead of three. So there's another option there. So different ways that you can kind of change up those frames. And then of course you can change the text by selecting the text tool from the tools panel, clicking in that text box and then dragging out the sides. And that's going to make a really sort of long and sort of narrow uh, text box. I can also go super long and skinny if I want to as well. So you can play around. The idea really is, is to be able to fit this text into an area that's going to work in your layout design. So in this case, you can also delete the text box like I just did. There's two text boxes in this particular template. You can also rotate the text box. Notice when I hover my cursor over these sort of um, clear squares, you get this double ended arrow and this allows you to sort of rotate the text. So if you want to align that text a bit better with your frame, then you can go ahead and do that. And then um, a couple of other things you can do, obviously, is there are different paint layers to this. So you can go ahead and you can change those if you wanted to. So you could go to edit fill with that preserve transparency box checked. Then maybe I want it to have more of a green tone. It's coming up as blue, but there we go. More of a kind of a green tone. Then I can click OK and click OK. And you can see that that's going to go green. And if you don't really like that color, I like to bring up the hue and saturation. And this allows me to change the saturation and it also allows me to change the hue slightly so if I want to bring it back down to that brown the brown is actually works better here I think like that and then you could also move elements around so if you want to reposition them then you can go ahead and do that and then the other thing you can do too is you can see that we have these transfer layers here there's one here and there is one over here but if you wanted to change that up, then you could select one of those layers and you could go to your art play palette and then you could go to a papery, for example. And then maybe um, just trying to pick. So maybe we'll bring this one in. So I'm going to bring this paper in here. I'm going to drag it over the top of that transfer. So the berries kind of exist there and then go layer, create clipping mask. And so this way you can kind of customize the transfers and make them different as well. So that's another way you can do that. I think we have an option here, not that one. Uh, there's another transfer in here somewhere, this one, I think. There we go. So you could do the same thing with that where you go ahead and you select paper and bring this down, add it, to your page. And so maybe these berries I want to add over there. So I'm going to drag that over and then go to layer, create clipping mask. So you can customize the, the different 
parts of the layout design. So that's a few ways that you can kind of change up that template. Now my um, photo blend should have finished downloading. So I'm going to go ahead and select those. And this is how you're going to download the files from the store. So if you're new from here and you haven't downloaded any files yet, then I have a program called WinZip. So when I right click on my mouse, I get this WinZip option and I'm going to ask to unzip it to here. And then it's going to hopefully come up. It thinks a little bit. At least it should. Maybe it's done it. Has it done it? Try it again. So be here we go. Oh, it's it's there. So that's how you know. So I'm just replacing that. And so I'm going to do the same thing, WinZip, unzip to here. And then I'm just going to refresh my um, my folder, my window, because it looks like um, it's not doing that otherwise. So now I can see that you've got the photo blends A and you've got photo blends B. So the idea of this is to go ahead and select a photo blends. And so I want my photo blends clipping mask to fit in here. And so this is more of a kind of a square of a, or a portrait style. So I'm sort of looking for um, options that allow me to get that sort of um, size and shape that's going to fit into that area. So that's the first two photo blends. And then let's go into the second one here. It's probably number four. I'm thinking it's number four. Anyway, I'm just going to pull it in. You can see that there's a, a number of different files. So you have the PNG file, which you can just drag and drop and clip your photo to. And then you have the PSD file, which is um, delivered in layered format. And then I include these separate layers. And these are really for those people that are working in programs other than Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. And it allows you then to be able to place these layers together so that you can use them like a layered file if you don't have a software program that supports the PSD file. It's always important that you open the PSD PSD file into your workspace. Don't try and drag it directly onto your layout because otherwise you will end up with a single layer. So I'm going to select all of these layers by clicking on the first layer, clicking on the last layer and holding down that shift button on my keyboard and then dragging those layers over. So you can see that fits fairly well. You have the option here of resizing if you want to. You can rotate if you want to. So lots of different ways of being able to do this. These are actually designed to um, fit in these specific spaces. And then I'm going to go and select, close this out, and we're going to go and select a photo. And um, because we haven't done much Christmas yet this year, then I'm going to head back into my archives and go to 2020. Um, and I'm pretty sure I took some Christmas photos then. Um, so this was a picture of me on Christmas. This was my last glass of wine. I have not had a glass of wine since Christmas last year. Um, but yeah, so that was a picture of me. So maybe I will use this picture today. And I'm going to drag this in. And I'm just going to put it into the background here. Please come in. What's going on with my computer? Why is it not working? just taking its time, I guess. Oh, it's a video, that's why. I'm not sure why it's a video. Maybe it's because it's, um... let's just go ahead and cancel that. And let's bring in a different one. This one, let's try this one. Okay. There we go, much better. Okay, so I'm bringing it into the background. And the reason I brought it into the background is because I was not organized and I did not have my layers selected. But when you introduce a photo to your layout design or to one of these photo blends clipping masks, you want to make sure you have the clipping mask layer selected. So that way, when you drag it over, it's going to sit directly on top of the mask layer. Um, and I'm not loving the color of this photo. So I'm going to go ahead and desaturate this. And I'm also going to brighten it by going to my curves. And I'm just going to bring up the top portion of that arc and then bring down the bottom here to get a little bit of contrast. And then I'm going to go to layer, create clipping mask. And so then our photo clips nicely 
to our mask layer. And I want to drag this up so we don't get the bottom of that um, picture. So when I get asked this all the time, you know, well, it, it, it doesn't work because you can see that the mask is sort of coming through here. So the way to fix this is to go ahead and select the mask layer and then select your paintbrush tool from the tools panel. And you can use any brush. I have this blending brush that I like. It's part of the uh, free mega pack that you can download from um, Anna Aspinus Designs. And I like to just sort of go in and paint over the areas where I want more detail. And it looks like there's this brush up here, which is causing this anomaly here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the eraser tool. And I'm just going to erase that part of the brush over my head so that we don't have that in the mix. And then you can zoom back out. So that way, you know, you get to see my face, but then you get this really nice sort of blended texture around the edges of the pages. Um, and then you have the option here, if you want to, you can go ahead and you can change the colors of these uh, paint layers. So maybe we want to go in and make it more of a brown color. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use my color picker. Ensure you have that preserved transparency box checked. And you can also change the blending modes. So color burn or linear burn. There's this fun one here. So I'm just gonna go through quickly and just change a couple of these. Uh, this one I might change to multiply. Let's go ahead and change this black to keep with the same color brown. You get some really fun effects if you use a color and then you apply a blending mode because you can see that um, it interacts with all of those underlying layers and um, it just has a bit more visual interest when you start using the, um, the blending modes. Let's go ahead and do this one. I think this one might show up pretty well, but you can see how that kind of makes a difference when you add in, I like the color burn on that one. So I'm pretty happy with the way that works. Um, I'm not gonna worry about these um, here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn these off. I've decided I don't want to use these frames after all, after all the trouble we went to, to creating them, but it did buy me some time while my photo blends downloaded. So there we go, we've got my photo in there. And of course now I can maybe change the position of this, but before I change the position of my text box, we wanna bring in some a background of course and some embellishments. So I'm gonna select the background layer. It's always important to select that layer. And then I'm going to go back to my digital art supplies. And let's go to our art play palette collection. And we have, the papery, which is super fun. We get four different types of uh, papers that are I consider artsy papers. So they're all ready for you to blend your photos into. And then you have these solid papers. And then I did this really fun one here. So I kind of want to use this one. We'll see how it looks. I'm going to drag this one in and drag it into the composition here. Um, and it looks like it might be a little bit too much. I don't know. It's not bad, but it's not great. So I'm gonna try a different one. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna try this dark chocolate one. And again, if you're not careful of where you place your cursor when you introduce these layers, then you are gonna end up adding layers and different options. So I don't like that. And let's try this one. So sometimes you can try different ones. And then what you can do is if you wanna, I don't like how dark that is. Maybe I'll go with this one after all. I feel like it's a little too much. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to blend two backgrounds together. So I'm gonna add this one in, add this in here like this below. So it's underneath. And then with the top one, maybe play with blending modes and see if, there's a way to kind of, so that screen one is kind of fun where I can just add a little bit of texture or a little bit of visual interest to that solid paper like that. And then you can change the opacity, you see, to modify that. So I quite like that approach. The lighter color is nice too. 
again, you can bring down that saturation. So I kind of like that. I think I'm going to go with that. And then to finish this off, I'm going to add in one of the multimedia elements. So we can go and take a look at those. We have these fun magic sprinkles. So there are four different types of magic sprinkles here. And I think it was this one, let's bring this in. So again, I'm dragging this into my background and I've included the separate layers just in case you guys want to reassemble them in your version. So I could add this in and you can see how this curves right nicely around and, and this fits really nice in the indentation here. And I feel like it needs a little bit more color. So in addition to that, and I like how that actually just sits like that. So I'm going to go to my elements now that come with the art play palette. We can go ahead and maybe go into the elements here and take a look and see what we've got in the way of color or foliage. So I can kind of see through these files. You can also click on them. So here, and it also says foliage. So I'm gonna go in and pull in this foliage. Now, if I drag this directly onto my layout, then you can see that we lose the ability to be able to have access to that drop shadow layer. Sometimes it doesn't matter. In this case, it looks okay. Um, but sometimes you're going to want to be able to adjust that drop shadow in terms of changing the, uh, the shadow layer, um, changing the color of it or the opacity. You can see it's quite light there. Whereas if I go ahead and I bring in the PSD file and I drop it into the background, and then I select the two layers and bring them over, then you can see that it's much darker. And I have the option then to be able to select and isolate that shadow layer. And I can make it really dark if I want to, or I can lighten it up. Anyway, I'm gonna select those two layers and I'm gonna place them down sort of behind that area there. And you can play around with sort of making it a little bit smaller maybe, so it doesn't get in the way of my face. I could also maybe rotate it and have it this way if I wanted to. Now, if you do that, you want to pay attention to the shadow. And this is where it's useful. You can use those arrow keys to sort of move that shadow around. So it then exists on the bottom of your element as opposed to the top. So that's always a good way to do that. I'm actually going to reverse it and have it like that. That's the way I like it. And then I want to bring that cute little Santa element in there. I love this little Santa guy, how cute is he? So I'm gonna drag him in and place him sort of on the top here. Cause I feel like we need a bit more color in this layout. So I can have him maybe in there. And then when you're adding these elements that don't already have drop shadows attached, then you can go to layer, layer style, and then drop shadow. And then that's going to add a nice drop shadow. And you might wanna increase the opacity of that and maybe even the size. So you can make him kind of pop off the page more um, if you want to. So at this point, once I've got the embellishments in place, then I can maybe revisit this text box and I'm going to maybe resize it. Probably need to change the rotation slightly. And so my goal is really to get this to fit in an area where we can sort of read it. So that might be quite good there. Maybe make it just a little narrower. So each time I'm selecting that type tool and clicking within that bounding but or within that box to select that type. If I don't do that and I try to resize it this way, you can see it's a bit disastrous because then it starts messing with your font size. So that's the way to do it. And then once I've got the text in place and I've got this little space here, which would be perfect for a title. So we can go to our titles, which uh, is the word art, of course. I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy out. I'm not really sure why he is in there, but he shouldn't be. And then we'll go ahead and bring in the, where is the word art? The holiday word art. So um, all is calm is perfect or let it snow. That should be my motto, let it snow, because I'm always wanting it to snow. So I'm gonna drag this in and it's gonna fit just perfectly in there, I think. Maybe have to resize it just a little bit just to get it to fit in that space. And I'm gonna drag it down too because one of my pet peeves is having these flat um, title elements on top of more dimensional elements. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that here. And 
I don't like that thing here, but because this is a template, we can move it. I keep forgetting this is a template. So I can take this splatter. There we go, grab the splatter. So with the move tool selected and the auto selection option checked, I can take that splatter and I can just move it down a little bit to make a bit more space for that um, title. And then maybe we'll go and calm, cozy, let's do cozy. A lot of these would work. So I could add this into the mix too and have this down here like this. Um, again, I would add a drop shadow layer style to the wooden word. So, uh, and that actually works really well. You can see how that just popped off the page really nicely. And then I just want to have some sort of connection here. So I'm going to bring in, I like these word transfers. Go to sneeze. Okay, I was going to sneeze. All right, bring this in. So I'm dragging this in and these are really cool, like vintage uh, dictionary transfers. And you can just layer them sort of behind your titles. My favorite way to build a title is to have like a word transfer with um, one of the word art pieces and then either have the, uh, the beaded threads or have one of the words, the wood words to go with it. I think it makes a really nice trio. So anyway, so that I'm pretty happy with that. Um, any questions about the template? I've showed you a couple of ways to be able to um, mix that up. Um, it looks like everyone is just chit-chatting. So I'm gonna go ahead and save these. So this is our first layout. And I'm gonna go and save this here. So layout one, me, wine. And then, Lost my save button at the bottom there. Okay. And someone's, uh, Mikey says she loves the magic sprinkles. I do too. I need to make more of them because I really like them. I li they're almost like splatters and they work really well with the splatters, but they've got that dimensional component and you can kind of split them apart, which we'll do maybe in the next layout. So I'm going to go ahead and close this down and then I'm going to create a new layout at 12 by 12. It's always a good idea to do that. I tend to open up papers and kind of work directly on the papers, but it's not a smart thing to do because if you accidentally save over it, uh, then you have to go and re-download the whole paper again. So now I am going to go and bring in, let's take a look. So maybe we'll start this one off with a paper and I kind of want to use this dark paper, um, but I don't think it's going to fit. So let's go ahead and start with this solid. The reason I want to show you, so um, when you, these dark backgrounds work really well with kind of darker photos. So if you've got um, photos with lots of dark kind of blues or greens or even black, so they work really well with nighttime photos. I actually took a picture when I came back from the gym last night and um, it's, it kind of took it from my street. So I thought I would show you how this works because um, this has kind of come up a little bit in my um, project class. So I literally just jet downloaded the photos from, uh, what is it, March, uh, not March, but November and um, December uh, today. So this is kind of our neighborhood here with the Christmas lights. I thought it looked quite pretty. So I, maybe we'll try and do something with this photo here. So I'm going to drag it into my workspace. Where are we? I don't even know where it is. There it is. So I'm gonna drag it into my workspace and I'm just gonna put it in the background here. And it's quite sort of long and narrow. So I'm going to go and select, and none of this is like, I haven't, I kind of have an idea of maybe what photo I might use or what products I might use, but I have no idea. Like this is not pre-scripted. I'm, I'm completely flying by the seat of my pants here. So I'm going to look for, we want sort of a, a very, uh, sort of landscape, long and narrow mask. Um, so let's go take a look at our masks. And so there's this one, which isn't too long and narrow. This one could be if we rotated it by 90 degrees, but I, I'm not entirely sure about that. Let's go see what else we've got here. That's more of a square. That one we just used. So this one, maybe this one will be good. 
So I'm gonna drag this in and instead of using all those layers this time, I'm just going to just drag in the PNG file and go ahead and just drag that. So that's actually probably gonna work pretty well. So I'm gonna bring that in and then I'm gonna take my photo, I'm gonna drag it directly onto the top and you'll notice um, I just have one file. So this is the difference between the PSD file and the PNG file is that this exists in just one layer. So it can be a little bit easier to uh, manage when you have that. I'm gonna increase my photo a little bit. I would not increase your photo more than about 20 to 25%. And then I'm going to go to layer, um, create clipping mask. There we go. And I really don't love this um, fire hydrant that sits outside of my house. It actually doesn't bother me on a regular basis, but when I take a picture and it's, it's in my layout, it annoys me. Um, so one of the things I'm just going to do here is um, I'm going to take the uh, stamp tool, the clone stamp tool, and I'm just going to bring this brush up and I wanna just make it super simple. And I'm just gonna stamp, hold down that um, Alt key on, or Option key on my keyboard if you're working in a Mac, Alt on a, on a Windows or a PC and just stamp that and then just sort of bring it over and see if I can kind of get rid of that a little bit. So I'm gonna repeat that action until it's gone. So I've pretty much been successful there. To, of getting rid of that fire hydrant. So, so notice now how this dark scene here works really well with this black background. Um, I can go ahead and I can make the background darker if I wanted to. So I can increase it and make it darker, um, but we lose all of that really nice texture. I can also change the photo by going to the levels and I can make this lighter. I don't wanna go too lighter, but just kind of play around with the different options and just see um, if you can improve it in any way, but it looks pretty good to me. Now, if I were to go with a um, lighter background, um, I'm gonna show you the difference, why the dark background works so well. So if I go ahead and I bring in this light color paper that we were working with before, and I'm just gonna drop it in there, it's gonna go on top because I had the photo layer selected. It still looks pretty good. And the reason it looks good is because we've got all of these supporting layers around the edge. So this sort of contains the blending and it helps the transition from the black to the gray. But for me, I think that it blends much better like that. So once we've got our uh, layout in the mix, then you can start thinking about maybe supporting some of these outer edges. So I'm gonna start off first of all with the um, art play palette. And I like to start with the art play palette because it's the least um, it's the least resistance. Again, we're working with single layer PNG files as opposed to the PSD files that are found in um, the artsy transfers. So I always like to go with the easiest option because of course easy means that you get to save yourself some time. I have my cursor selected behind the mask layer. So any of these layers that I bring in are going to be deposited kind of behind that mask layer. So you can go ahead and you can start sort of playing around with maybe placing some of these layers around like this. Maybe we'll rotate this. This has got a dark edge, so like that. So you can place it in. And then if you see any hard edges, it's real simple. You just take the eraser tool, or you can use a layer mask with brushes and you just kind of get rid of that sharp edge. And then what I wanna do is maybe just align that stain here with the stain that's in the background here. And then maybe we'll take a look and see what this paint looks like on top. So that's super light, you see. Um, so we could, we could put it like that, but what I would be inclined to do is maybe try a blending mode so that we get the texture of the paint, but it's not sort of really, really bright. So I kind of like that, the color dodge. Um, and then maybe we can bring down the opacity a little bit. And then that way we still get the check texture but we don't get this super um, kind of stand out and it just blends so much better. And then if you don't like this part here, like I don't love how this is coming into the house, then you can just select that eraser tool and you can just remove that part of the transfer. So maybe we'll remove those two pieces like that. So I'll just keep kind of going in and just bringing in bits and pieces, see what this one does. doesn't really fit too well. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and delete it. 
And then maybe we'll try the splatter here. Oh, that's fun. So I like this color. Now, what do you do if you, you know, like these two colors, but you don't love this color down here? It's real simple. You take the lasso tool and you select the area that you want to change, and then you go to edit fill. And I'm going to select this purple as my color and then click OK. Um, and you can see that I've managed to bring in a little bit of the art stroke here. So you could undo this and you could be a little bit better about selecting that layer. In this case, I'm just going to deselect this, select my eraser tool, and I'm just going to go in and erase that real careful like that. Like that. And then again, if it's a little too dark, you can just select it and you can go to your adjustments and you can maybe bring down the saturation a little bit. You can make it a little bit darker so it doesn't kind of stick out so much. You can even cut and you could paste it and so that you can move it around and have it on a separate layer. So maybe we have it like this, like that. So let me see if there's anything else. We looked at that one. Maybe bring in this one, see what this one does. So notice the difference between putting it behind the mask and in front of the mask. So maybe we could have that there and then you could just go in with your, um, with your eraser tool, increase the size of it and maybe just blend that edge out a little bit. So you're just sort of building up the layers behind the area here. I don't think I've used this one yet, so we'll bring this one in. Oh, that one's fun. So we bring that one in. Sometimes you don't have to edit them at all, and sometimes there's a little bit of an edit involved. So once, once you've kind of exhausted all possibilities of this one, which I don't think we've done yet, so I'm going to keep going. So this one we can place behind here. It's not going to work as well, this one. You can see that this doesn't work as well. Um, but again, one of the other things you could do here is um, don't discount something like this. I'm also thinking the other option may be to let's bring this on top of our design and then let's play with the blending modes and just see what happens. So you've got this multiply blending mode. That's kind of interesting. That's kind of fun too. So you have all these different options that you can sort of play with. You can use it as sort of as color overlay. I quite like that. That adds some depth to it, that soft light. And then if you don't like all the texture that's going on in the middle, kind of in this area, it's easy. You just can kind of get rid of it and just use the outside part of it. Maybe you wanna pull this over so the edges align, but I like the depth in there. So it's coming together nicely and we haven't even got to the artsy transfers yet. We've got a hard edge down the bottom here. So again, just kind of bring in a big brush and remove it. And if you're not confident with using the, um, the eraser tool, then just add a layer mask and use your brushes. Um, but for easy edits and stuff like this, like you can see, I've got a hard edge up here from something. And so a good way to be able to find a hard edge is to sort of just go and where is it? turn off the layers, but it's not, there you go. So it's this paint layer here. So I'm just gonna remove that like that. And then once you've exhausted the artsy transfers, just wanna see if we can maybe get this one in. I don't think this one's gonna work because it's too light. So let's go ahead and move on to the um, artsy transfers. I like to store my artsy transfers with my art play palette and the artsy cards. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at those. And then this is gonna give us even more options. So if I bring in this artsy transfer, you see, then I have all of these different layers that I can play with. And this is the reason that artsy transfers are only delivered in PSD format, because in order for me to deliver all of these layers separately, there's no chance that even I could reassemble them in the same way that they're assembled in this way with all of the uh, blending modes applied to them. So it's just too hard to deliver them outside of the PSD format. But if you're working in Photoshop or Elements, 
they are um, a really useful tool to have. So you can see that I'm just pulling in these elements individually and then kind of relocating them down there. And again, I can use that eraser tool to erase parts of the transfer. I could also bring in the entire transfer if I wanted to, like this, and then go ahead and start turning off the layers. So you can turn them off. I like to actually group my Artsy transfer layers together so that I have them all together. And then you can go in and you can turn off these different layers to see which ones you like best. I've placed this at the moment below the mask area, but you can of course put them on top. I'm looking for that. It's gonna be the last one I can tell. So I was gonna turn that off. So I'm gonna keep that in there because we already have this transfer here and maybe keep that in there like that. So the more layers you add, obviously the more complex it becomes, but also uh, the better it is, I think. So I, I like that. And I'm pretty happy with the way that that is right now. Maybe we will come in, there's, there's this really cool branch here. So maybe I'm going to play around with the uh, tree brushes that we've got. So if I go back to my Yuletide, let's pull this out so we can see everything. Um, so I've got these fun winter branches, which are pretty neat. Um, so we've got these branches that we could maybe incorporate. So maybe I'm going to want to play with those too. So in order to load my brushes, I'm going to drag the ABR file. There are two ABR files. Uh, one supports uh, Photoshop Elements 15 and above plus Photoshop, um, Photoshop CC. The other ones basically supports earlier versions. And the difference is, is that the large ABR file um, for the newer versions of Photoshop basically go up to 5,000 pixels. And so I've resized the brushes into a smaller size so that they can still be used in the, in the earlier versions of Photoshop. So we've got our winter brushes there and I'm going to do the same thing with the trees and bring those in as well. So you can see as I drag them in, then they get added to the bottom of my panel and I get to see them and I can change the size. So I can make them really quite big if I want to, so I can see them really well. So one of the things I wanted to try here was maybe the tree brushes. So I've got this tree brush here. And so I'm going to place this maybe down at the very bottom above my background, create a new layer and I can add that in. So that's using the white. Maybe we want to sample and go with the brown as it is there, maybe go a little lighter and add that in like that. Can't see that as well, but we could potentially add in a blending mode. So that's kind of effective, that one there, if we wanted to go with that, or we could go with linear burn, which is sort of darker. Um, and I think that's kind of the way I'm gonna go with that. Don't love this bit coming out the top here, so I'm gonna get rid of that but I do like this part here. So I can, I can have that in there like that. You can try different brushes if you want to. So let's see what else we've got here. I also have this one here and it's probably not gonna work so well. Maybe I'll try the Christmas tree ones. I don't know if that will work super well either because it's not really a Christmas tree, but let's just try it anyway and see what happens. So yeah, it's not nearly as effective. But the other thing that we could maybe try too is maybe one of these branches. So if we take one of these branches and we rotate it by 90 degrees, we get a similar sort of effect. And if I go ahead and open up my brushes settings here, I can also flip this brush so that it goes the other way. And I can also resize the brush by bringing down the size number. And I'm going to maybe go a little darker this time and maybe add that in like that. There we go. So now let's play around with our brushes. So there's another option here too. And you could layer these up as well. So I'm going with color burn again. Try and create new layers every time you add a new brush, uh, brush stroke. That way, um, 
if you change your mind about one a particular brush stroke, then you can go in and you can just remove that one brush stroke. So you can kind of build your own tree here. I think I prefer the tree option. So I'm going with that. And then I, all I need to do is add some embellishment and then also add in uh, my title. So let's go take a look at those fun magic sprinkles. I'm going to go ahead and turn off these layers and we'll go and grab those. So one of the things that you might want to do if you're not working, if you don't have a need for these uh, layers here, um, then it might be beneficial. I actually like to visually be able to see them so I know what they look like. But um, you might want to copy and paste these files and put them all in one place so that you don't have to click on these uh, layers if you don't want to. So I'm going to bring this in like this. And I don't want this at all, um, or maybe this I don't want, and I don't want the stitching, but maybe everything else I do want. So I'm going to bring those layers together and just select those layers. And then I'm going to drag this in and oops. So again, with the multimedia elements, it's a good, I or the, yes, the multimedia elements, it's a good idea to group them together. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to layer group layers. And then you want to make sure you have that auto select option unchecked. That was the reason that I had issues with it kind of moving like that. And I am going to place that like that. I'm going to drag it up to the top because I want it to sit on top of my photo, on top of the artistry. And then I feel like there's a little bit too much going on there. So if we go in there, then I can maybe turn off the seeds and then maybe we'll go in and we'll turn off some of these splatters, um, but we get to keep the stars. And I like these gold berries here, but maybe I want to move them to sort of anchor that tree a little bit. So we've got this kind of visual triangle happening at the moment. So I want to try and kind of riff off that. And maybe we've got we've got we've certainly got a visual triangle with the with the berries, you know, these small circles, but maybe I want to add something red in there. So I'm keeping that in mind too. So as I'm looking through, maybe we can take a look. We've got a red bow here. So maybe I will bring this in and just grab the bow from this and add this in here. So that's kind of fun if I wanted to add it there. It doesn't really work up there as well as it perhaps works down here. There's also this really cool branch here too. So I could add this guy in and maybe bring that there because there's the tree and the branch. So don't love that as much. So I kind of like this, even though we don't have the red up here. So what I'm actually gonna do is um, just use some of the uh, splatters that I have just released. There's a new set of the, um, the splatter bundle. It is um, here. So there, it's the splatter bu uh, bundle brush set. And there are basically five sets of these fantastic splatters. So there's 20 different brushes into each set. So when you get the splatter bundle, you get 100 splatters. It's pretty awesome. I've been having a lot of fun with them, adding them to my project pages. And also I'm gonna add some here because they are the perfect way to add the color triangle that we're talking about here. So I am going to look at these. I kind of like this one here. I've been using this one a lot. Um, and then I'm gonna sample the red of the bow somewhere, get a color I want, and then I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna add that in like that. And then maybe just reorganize it, bring it down below the berries. So maybe just add that in and maybe you don't want to have all of those circles. So you can take a hard round brush and you can go in and you can actually modify these two if you want to. So we can go in and just maybe have those three in there like that. So now we've got this really fun sort of visual triangle here. Let's go ahead and finish this up by adding a title. Um, to do that, I am going to go ahead and Access my word art. Um, let's see, gift of home, cookies and cocoa, merry and bright, merry on. So merry on, merry and bright would be good. And to all a good night would be good. So sometimes if I don't know what, 
what kind of um, title I want, then I'll just get a bunch of them. So let's go ahead and select these three. And then maybe I want this night one uh, that seems quite perfect. And then maybe I'm going to use this Yuletide too. So I've selected multiple ones. And the way you, that you select is to hold down that control or command key on your keyboard. And then these, because they're single layer files, I can just drag them directly onto our canvas. And I'm just going to click the check mark at the top of my screen. If you're working in Photoshop, that will be on the bounding box if you're working in Elements. Um, and I've managed to drop them in the group, but that's no problem. I can just select those layers and drag them up on top of that group like that. And then it's just a matter of seeing which looks better. Now, obviously, these are black titles. Um, you can't see them on a dark background. So I'm going to go to Image Adjustments and go to Invert. And that's going to invert my title to white. So that works actually really quite well there. And then with that Auto Select option checked, I can kind of bring in and reorganize this other one. So it, now it's just a question of getting the text to fit on the design. So maybe I have that like that. We'll go ahead and add a drop shadow. So this is the benefit of being able to customize your drop shadows is, is that for a dark background, you're gonna want your opacity to be much higher than if you are working on a light background. So that's the nice part about that. And then I've got this Yuletide, it doesn't really stand out very well. So I think I'm just gonna get rid of that. And then I think we had just a couple of other options in terms of the titles there. This is to all a good night. So I'm unchecking that. Let's add this down the bottom here. This will go just nicely like that. And maybe instead of going with white, we'll go with uh, sort of this purple again. So I'm gonna sample the color of the, the, paint, the paint that we were working with before and click okay. Can't see it. So then we're gonna to go to our levels and then just increase it to the point where we can see it. And if it's too bright, then you could always go to your hue and saturation and bring down the saturation a little bit. So it's just, it's got a little bit of that purple in it, but it's not overwhelming. And then I think we had one more. We don't obviously don't need that now because we've got our title in there. So I'm pretty happy uh, with that. There is one other fun little element that I have that I know would work really well here. We've got, um, it's in the Art Play palette Yuletide and it's this really fun star element. At least I thought it was here. Am I imagining it? <laughs> here it is there. So uh, I'm bringing this in. And so maybe we add this at the top here and play around with having that in there like that. It might be too much, but I kind of like the idea of having the star there. You could even reorganize it so that it sort of goes um, underneath a little bit. So that's kind of fun, I like that. So I think that's the way I'm gonna go with that. And then uh, another thing too, we've got lots of different word art elements here. It might be fun to add in some of these um, word art titles. So I'm gonna just drag in two of these and just see, and of course they've gone behind now, so I have to bring them back up to the top. Um, and of course we've, we've now got lots of red in the mix. So I don't know if I want, if, if I don't want the red, I can either remove that word or I can go to my hue and saturation and I can maybe change the color of that word, bring down the saturation, maybe change the lightness. So I can customize it to make it fit the colors a little bit better. We already have that down here. I don't love that, so I'm turning that off, but I do like this uh, Joya Noel, which means Merry Christmas in French. And maybe add that there. And of course you can't see it very well. So maybe in this case, we go to image adjustments, invert, and we get, I think if I zoom in, you get kind of a gray and a, and a brown, and you can change obviously the hue of that if you want it with green tones or brown tones. So we can bring this guy down here like this and have, add him in there. And then if you want to finish him off, then you can just add a little layer style, a drop shadow layer style. For these word labels, I would go with something um, a lot narrower. It, with the opacity, you can keep the opacity high. Um, 
high percentage because we're on dark background, but I would go with maybe a distance of two and a size of two and just keep that really low key like that. So that's my finished page. Um, any questions about that? I just want to check to see lots of chatting. I love that you guys chat while I'm working. It's awesome. You guys are probably getting to know each other now because <laughs> you've sat in the same, uh, same, same session so much. Okay. Um, okay, there's dark blue bars. I'm not really sure what the dark blue bars. There were some dark blue bars, but I updated the software and so there shouldn't be bars unless they're at the bottom. There might be some at the bottom. Um, anyway, email me about the blue bars if you had blue bars. Um, Anna? Yeah. Sorry, Anna. It's Charlene. Yeah. Um, blue box, I think you're probably looking at the chat box and also the um, photos of us if you have those on your screen. They yeah. appear to be showing up as blue. It is. It shouldn't yeah. be there, though. This is new. It only just started showing, right, in Zoom. And I've updated the software. So I'm going to have to get on with them again and find out why that keeps showing up. But yeah, it's the chat box. Um, but it's not over this area here, so it shouldn't hinder your view too much, but it's not ideal for sure. Yeah, no, it's not hindering the view, except whatever you just moved is now over your brush panel and your layers panel. Yeah, if this is the chat box. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't yeah. have another screen, but and I, I think it was fixed in the last session, our project session yesterday, right? It was not on there yesterday. Yeah, so I wonder why it's back again. That's bizarre. Anyway. Oh, well. Well, thanks for letting me know. At least I'm keeping it out of the way of the layers panel and the layout. So yeah. um, that, you know, I'll have to look into it and find out what's going on. It is something to do with Zoom. I had an issue with this with the other um, streaming program that I used to use that I switched from. It was one of the reasons I switched because I got tired of dealing with the problems. Um, so I hope that it's not going to uh, be the same for this one. Okay, so Charlene says, I love how you encourage us to change and modify your supplies to fit, fit our designs and coloring the splatter in an unusual color to match your photo. Yeah, do everything to coordinate with your photos. This is about you, not about me. Um, and it's fascinating to see the different transfers and artsy transfers look with dark backgrounds. Yeah, so yeah, definitely encouraging you to use these dark backgrounds. They um, notice, as someone has just said, notice how when you go dark with a background, it makes the lighter colors stand out. So you notice the stars, you know these, notice these white splatters and um, all of the whites just pop against that dark, <laughs> dark background. And uh, the splatters are awesome. I love the splatters. I've been using them a lot. Um, and then um, the three, it's the, the three blue boxes is because of the participants, which I guess I can close that one out. Um, I'm not going to close you guys out because I like to see you and I need to see the chat box. So there's not a whole lot I can do with that one. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, and then what time is it? Anna, you just muted yourself. There you go. Thank you. I'm trying to keep these boxes now out the way of your view. Okay. I just saved that. Um, so what I was saying was, is that it's three o'clock. Um, I don't want to spend too much more time, um, but I thought that it might be fun to do a sort of just a fun fun page so i'm gonna pick an artsy background because that's always a good idea uh this one might be fun let's go ahead and bring this one in so sometimes it's fun just to play with the art and not worry about photos um you know it's just fun sometimes just to play around and experiment with the different products and um the different tools in photoshop so, um, and you can create sort of a scene by using the artistry. So I'm going to go and start off with, 
let's start with some brushes. So let's take a look at some of these brushes down here. We have some really fun brushes here. So we have these trees. I kind of think that this here looks like a tree. So let's play on that. And I've selected this brush here. And so I'm going to sample this color. It says it's blue, but it looks more like black to me. And I'm going to add that in like that. Um, and then I'm going to duplicate this and make it a little stronger. Maybe go ahead and play around with the size of it. like that, maybe go ahead and merge those two layers so I can go and merge them. And then I can also play around with the blending modes as I've encouraged you to do before. So I quite like the, I don't know if I like the dark though. I'm not really loving that. Maybe make it smaller, so small is better. Small works much better. Okay, and I like uh, this darker color. So that's the way I'm gonna go with that. So we've added some brushes in there. We've got the house in the mix here. So maybe we'll go and look for some greenery to add. And so we have a couple of options here. We can go into the elements. So I've used this one. This one's kind of a painted one. So it doesn't really have much green to it. So let's go take a look at the magic sprinkles. And I know we have one here. So there's this fun greenery thing here. Um, so that must be maybe in this one. Yes. So I'm gonna bring in the PSD file. And I'm gonna add this in here like this. And so I'm just gonna select all the layers and we'll drag them in sort of place it over the top of this tree layer here like this. And then I can sort of play around with the layers individually. So these red beads, maybe I wanna move them a little bit. And maybe I wanna move these stars a little bit. Bring them down like that. And that works pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, group those layers just to kind of keep them nice and tidy. And you can uh, you can change the, uh, the name of it. I'm just gonna put MS for magic sprinkles. And then what else can we add in here? It kind of looks good already. So I'm not really thinking we need much else. Um, I wanted to see if we could use the branches. I had an idea for the branches, but I don't know if it's going to work because we already used the trees. So where is the branches gone? Here we go. Into branches. So sometimes you can just drag these in and so you can see how they're going to fit with your um, design. Like I said, I think it's going to be a bit much. So you could leave this as it is just to play with it. Uh, the other thing that you could do, of course, is to bring in one of those photo lens clipping masks. So if you decide you want to add a photo to this, then you can do that. Let's go ahead and I believe it would be in B. I think it's this one. Let's add this one in. I'm just going to use the actual photo lens and add it in. And so you can see that fits just perfectly in there. We lose our trees if I do that, unless you add the trees on top. And then we can go and add a photo by grabbing our Christmas photos from last year. Must have one of the Christmas tree. Maybe not. I have the Christmas tree ready to be dressed, but not. A lot of Christmas. 
here we go. Here's a picture of the tree. So let's drag the tree into the mix here. I don't know if this will be tall enough, this mask for this photo, but let's see. It's not too bad. So I can add this in like this. Go to layer, create clipping mask. It's not the best um, mask for this particular photo, I don't think, or the best color background. So I'm gonna switch this out. I don't like that. We have to find a different photo for this particular background. And this is one of the reasons why it's always a good idea to start with your photo and then build your colors around your photo because otherwise then you end up having to pick a photo that's gonna fit the colors in your design. Um, our garlands or our stockings, that would be good. Let's see, that's the wrong orientation. So maybe this, let's go with this. So we can add this in and we got the wood too. So I think this will go well with the actual. So I can go to layer, create clipping mask and you can see that blends pretty well. Now, if I was wanting to spend more time then I'd probably introduce the actual um, mask. So if I go back and I select the, um, where am I going? If I go to my, Photo blends, and we go back to number three. And I bring in the PSD file. You can see the difference between using the PNG and using the PSD. So if I bring this in and I drag this over here, go to layer, it's group blades. <clears throat> and I'm just going to turn off that original layer. And now I'm going to bring this photo down and clip it to just the mask layer then you can see that we then have the option to be able to not only change these layers so I can resize this mask so that it fits better within the area of that painted layer, but you can also then see all of these other layers too. So you've got this layer, you can move them around, you can recolor them to make them work for your design. And then I'd go ahead and I'd add a title and then I would call that one good. Okay, so one of the things I'm gonna do quickly before I go ahead and leave for today is to show you, um, I don't know what happened to all my layouts, but I'll find them latest weird stuff going on today. Okay, so layout and that was the tree, not the tree, the garlands. Okay, and so one of the things that I haven't done, I uh, keep forgetting to do every time I do one of these uh, sessions is to show you the, um, the layouts that some of the team have made. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's move this down here. I don't actually know how to close that out, but okay. So uh, this one is from uh, Dorina. Um, she is, um, She's, she's a scrapbooker and an artist as far as I can see because she does a lot of really fun stuff with her designs. But you can see how she has added um, some filters to her photo and she's created um, a fun piece of art using the different elements. I love how she's combined the elements with the magic, magic sprinkles there. And Adrienne's done a lovely heritage page. I like how she has desaturated some of the colors and elements to give her layout more of a muted look. Notice too also how she has resized some of the elements to suit her needs. This one is from Charlene. And um, I wanna say this is a Christmas card, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, but I love how she's put the photo in a frame. Of course, frames are always a good option and you have that available to you in the, let me just open a new window. It would be much easier if I did that. So if I go to the release and I go into our you tide, then you'll see that in the elements, we have this fun frame element. And so Charlene has basically rotated it by 90 degrees to make it work for her portrait. Uh, I think it's a cardinal that, um, the bird. 
And then this one is lovely. This one is by Jerry, I believe. And I love how she's used this red leaf, not necessarily Christmassy, um, but I guess the red with the autumnal um, kind of colors uh, makes it look, make, makes it suitable um, for this particular page. Another one, this one is from Esther. So Esther is uh, one of the original uh, or kind of an older team member who's come back to us. She had some um, life things go on. And I love how she's created this um, mountain kind of style scene using the elements from the artsy transfers and the different brushes. She's created a landscape um, and then she's added some text and she's just created some fun artistry. So that one's really cool there. Another one by Jerry here. She's a group big um bird and animal photographer. So showcasing one of her bird photos here. This one's super magical. I love the blending in this. I love how the photo blends into this portion of the, the paint here. And it, it almost looks like snow on a roof. Um, so that one's by Laura. And then uh, this one is uh, from Darina too, sharing photos of her cat. So I love how uh, you don't necessarily have to be uh, using Christmas photos with this collection, it works really well uh, with all different types of photos. And then this one, another one from Darina, um, showcasing some winter berries. I like, again, notice how she has uh, changed the color of the word art. And she's also changed the size of it too, to suit her needs. And I love how she's used the elements here over this transfer um, I think this is part of the actual paper, but this is also available as a transfer because I blended it into the side of that photo I was working with. And then this one is from Nancy. Um, I believe this is one of her grandchildren. And then we have, um, this one's really cool. This one is by Joan. So this is where you can see how the contrast of the dark with the light sky makes the photo pop. And then we also have these different splatters that kind of come down um, and, and the trees kind of coming up. So I think it's a great way of showing snow is to use those splatter brushes. Um, fun one here from um, Mikey. She used some elements from a previous Art Play palette and she's uh, basically used some of the new elements to decorate the tree. Um, one by Diane here, very simple, kind of just documenting one of the holiday weekends. Um, this one is by uh, one of our newer team members, Kathy. I love how she's used the frames here to um, add in some details of looking through the window. Um, so she's used her frames as a sort of a window here. This one just came in today from Joan having some fun with uh, dressing up her subject here and using extractions. Um, another piece of artistry here, simply just by playing with the elements. I love the, the shape of this one and the duplication of those uh, star elements. I think that they're super fun. And then I'm going to close it on this one because uh, I can hear vacuums and stuff in the background. Um, but this is a really fun one with from Dorina using the tree brushes. So different blending modes, uh, adding brushes on top of one another to create this really cool landscape scene. Okay, well, um, I've lost everybody now. Um, let me make sure, where's the chat box gone? <laughs> chat. Okay. So um, any questions about that? Of course, this collection is available for at least one more week. I am probably going to be doing another collection, kind of got an idea of what I'm going to be doing. Um, so yeah, so I'm excited to um, maybe do something else before the end of the year. I thought this was going to be my last collection, but maybe not. So hopefully that has inspired you and um, added in a little bit of uh, Christmas magic into the mix. And um, Kathy's asking, are all of my brushes loaded onto your computer? Now, I just load in the ones that I'm using at any given time. So I'll have a bunch in there. Um, if you have too many in your panel, then it'll end up basically crashing your system and you'll lose them all. So I just load them in as and when I need them. So these are all the new splatter brushes that I've created. Um, so I have those in because I'm into using those right now. And then um, I have some watercolor brushes. I like using the paper brushes. So I have various kind of brushes that I'm using, but I'll come across and I'll kind of get rid of some. I like to keep these at the top here because these are ones I, I use frequently. Um, 
So let's see. I think that's it for questions. Daddy says, had to join late. Can I watch the recording? Yes, Daddy. Um, I will be uh, basically doing a recording and I'll be getting it onto my blog by tomorrow. Um, so watch your email by third. So tomorrow is Thursday. So I'll be sending out an email of kind of updates and what's new. Um, if you're on my list, then you'll receive that automatically. Otherwise, you can sign up at AnnaAspinusDesigns.com and you'll get that. Otherwise, just check the blog at AnnaAspinusDesigns.com tomorrow and it should be there. Uh, um, for you to access. And then um, everyone, th you're very welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming and supporting me and watching. It's always super fun um, to get to see you. I'm sorry about the blue boxes. I will try and figure out why that's suddenly happening again. We had a session on Monday and that it didn't happen. So um, I don't know what we're going on um, here. Kathy says, when you close the program, though, you lose the brushes. I don't lose my brushes. The only time it clears out my brushes is, is when I have too many brushes loaded. So um, when I close out my program and I come back, my brushes will still be here. Um, Gail says, first time, I really enjoyed it. You're welcome. I tend to do one of these about once a month. Every time I re release a new collection, I will um, do one of these where I put three layouts together and um, you know share pieces of the collection and give you some inspiration. But don't worry, if you are here late, then there will be a replay. Um, I will be sending it out tomorrow via the newsletter. Um, otherwise, you can check back at the blog at Anna Aspen's Designs, and then you'll be able to access it there by tomorrow. So I'm hoping to get it up tonight, but it just depends on how my day goes. So thank you again. Um, appreciate you guys. Appreciate your support. I hope that um, you get into the little bit more of this Christmas spirit. I don't know if I will be back in this space again this year, other than for my project people. Um, but certainly in January, if I come out with a new collection, I will be doing another one of these in January. So when I say if I'm going to do another collection, you know there's another collection coming. Um, I just might not be able to do the inspiration until after the new year. So happy holidays. Hope you all finally get into the Christmas spirit, uh, make some magic happen, make some memories. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the new year. Take care.